Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Wednesday of the third week of Lent. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today, you know, one of the things, uh, again, that uh, we notice is that during Lent, we bounce around to all different places in the Gospel. And so today we're back with the uh, Sermon on the Mount, back in in, uh, Matthew's Gospel at that point. And here we are, again, looking at the law. And uh, by the law, we really are talking about uh, the sum total of, of God's commands to the nation of Israel and the fact that he really called them to a place of obedience in so many different ways. And one of the things that people often wondered about the coming of the Messiah would be that Uh, the Messiah is going to kind of take this burden off of us. But one of the things that Jesus clarifies here is that that he didn't come for that purpose. He didn't come to abolish the law, but he came rather to uh, fulfill it. In other words, that he would make it uh, so that man would be capable of obeying and fulfilling the law, that... uh, that we as humankind would have a capability to do that, which does come to us through the coming of the Holy Spirit. And um, the, uh, the thing about this, though, is that many times we equivocate uh, <clears throat> the law with some of the legalistic rigor that has been used to apply it. And that's where we get into trouble. And that's one of the things that Jesus is making clear here is that uh, he is wanting to make sure that people understand that there is a law that that needs to be followed, the law that comes from God, his revelation to us. And as uh, we see even in the Ten Commandments that we use for our examination of conscience, you know, we can say, well, you know, this law no longer applies or this longer no, or that law no longer applies because our modern culture has really changed. And what Jesus is saying that has great application to us today is it doesn't matter what culture says, that, that the teachings of God are not dependent upon what culture uh, says is good to do or not good to do. This is God's law. This is how God who created us is reveal that he's designed us to live in this very specific way. And so we're, we are called to uh, be able to uh, participate in fulfilling the law. And again, Jesus said, uh, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of the letter. And I've basically shared this before. <clears throat> the smallest letter is the yud. It's a, a Y sound, and it looks like an apostrophe in the Hebrew language. And, a, a, and that's the smallest letter. It was it, in the original uh, New Testament, it would say, not a yod nor a tittle. Now, a jot or a tittle is the way that it was translated. So not a yod or a tittle. Tittle is an extension of a letter or a change in a letter that makes it a different letter. So like if you take the capital E and you remove one of those extensions, you have the capital F. That would be considered the smaller, the extension that was removed would be considered a tittle. And he says, I'm not going to change the meaning of the law. I've come to fulfill it. And he continues to go 
through the process that we need to be uh, embracing that law that God has given us. And so this is a a powerful thing for us to think about. But at the same time, with the coming of the Holy Spirit, he places within our hearts the presence of God that will help us to be inclined to honor and fulfill the law of God, that we will have uh, a come alongside, or another word for the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the come alongside, who is there to help us and to form our consciences so that we do uh, obey the law. And These laws are there to help us to live lives that are honoring to God and help our whole being to be in concert with the one who did, in fact, create us. So today during Lent, again, we're we're thinking about are there areas where I've kind of given myself leverage and portfolio where I've kind of expanded uh, my uh Uh, you know, kind of uh, living my life in a way that isn't pleasing to God and just kind of relegated it to, well, you know, God doesn't really pay that much attention to this one anymore. And it can be in a number of areas, but it's one that we really need to look at very seriously, recognizing the fact that uh, that he desires to uh, for us to allow our lives to be formed by these values that he has brought forth into the world and they'll be good for us and healthy for us both in body mind and soul so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight O lord our strength and our redeemer amen well are there takeaways today well obviously i think the big one is to maybe do an examination of conscience using the for example the ten commandments and see if there are areas where you have kind of let loose. Uh, perhaps, you know, uh, uh, while we don't necessarily steal, maybe uh, we are not doing our best in terms of, uh, uh, you know, working to our fullest or uh, at our job, or maybe we're taking things home that don't belong to us. There's a lot of ways we can look at it, or even honesty on our, on our taxes we talk about murder, we can also uh, talk about gossip and those types of things. When we talk about adultery, we can also talk about issues of sexual impurity. And to see those as areas where God does want us to truly work to bring about a life that is pure and chaste and holy. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.